Hey guys, so 6.1 is due out in a few days. So this video is going to show you um, how things will be or what things will be like when the patch goes live. So I, I just want to mention that I'll only go over the changes that really got my attention or the things that I found interesting, which also includes um, updates to my previous guides, especially the tanking videos. So this means I <laughs> will intentionally miss a few things. There are also some changes like the ones for garrisons that basically have just so much information around them. Um, there's just too much to mention in one video. So I do recommend visiting the patch notes site for that. So in the description box below, just make sure to check out that link I've included. So for this video, I will start off with some of the general changes to the game itself uh, that I again found interesting. Now if you were looking for class specific changes uh, or notes, um, just click on, click on any of the links you're seeing in the screen right now. Okay, so for the general changes, the first one I want to mention is the updated Blood Elf models. So. Um, and that's basically one of the reasons why I'm actually currently leveling a um, Blood Elf Priest. Anyway, um, the, I actually started the game as a Blood Elf. Um, I just don't remember which class. Um, the new models right now on the PTR have more detail to them, as with, of course, the recent model updates uh, in Warlords of Jenner. So in my opinion, the changes add more a certain level of grit to the character's overall look. So, especially for the darker skin belts, um, they look a whole lot better in my opinion. Uh, they sort of look better as warriors or any other kind of melee class right now. So, if you want to see what it looks like, uh, just um, while you still have some time, you can download the PTR and check it out. Although, waiting for another week won't be so bad. I'll let the video roll on for a bit for you to see some of the changes. Okay, so the second edition uh, is basically Twitter. So um, it just basically allows you to share in-game stuff instantly to your friends or to anyone who's following you on Twitter. So if you want to activate this feature, this feature, just uh, go onto your social options in the interface menu to enable, add, or disconnect a Twitter account. Um, you know, for people like me, I normally run solo unless I meet some great people in the game and decide to, you know, you know, do stuff with them. Um, but if you're the type who wants to share in-game stuff instantly, um, you can now uh, do that via Twitter. Now, the third change, which I really appreciate, is the addition of the Heirlooms tab. So, I, I suppose just like uh, a number of people, I do have a level 1 bank too, just to store stuff, which includes Heirlooms. Uh, patch 6.1 brings that feature that allows you to store all of them in one place So it's basically um, shares the same space with your mounts and your toys. Uh, it's, a, it's in a separate tab um, Here's a you know one thing that's interesting about that is that if you like collecting everything that you can find and in this case heirlooms that gives an achievement which gives you a mount that you can use starting level one so the appearance is basically a mech engineer's chopper that has, you know, a chauffeur driving you around. So it's pretty neat uh, in, in, in case you do decide to level uh, another alt, uh, as traveling will be made easier. Okay, so for those of you um, who've been um, working on your garrison and maxing it out, uh, the fourth edition or change is the, you know, having garrison visitors around. So. Uh, there's a chance because of these visitors that you get a daily quest which offers various rewards like um, epic gear tokens which range from 630 to 655 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you get there's also a chance to get apexis crystals and other stuff. So the quests are varied and can include downing specific dungeon bosses, bounties or elite NPCs or even raid boss kills. Uh, the raid boss kills part actually just reminds me of the must die quest in Wrath of Lich King expansion. Now, connected to that fourth change is um, you know the ability to summon raid bosses in your garrison. So, um, some of the um, 
quests you get from your garrison visitors can you know provide you an item that allows you to summon a raid boss so it is intended for group play which can range from a minimum of 10 to a maximum of around 40 players okay so the sixth change is actually bringing um, some graphical improvements or actually options to change your graphics so one of the things that really bugged me about uh, warlords of Janner is that um, what well, was basically taking away and the lack of options to improve the game's graphics so i know it's no crisis or dragon age inquisition or games of the sort but you know but being able to you know but being on the master race um i i think um you know the game should allow for more options for gamers who spend time improving their rigs so in 6.1 uh this uh, brings some nice options to us. So this will now include um, ambient inclusion for um, in NVIDIA cards for, you know, basically just better lighting effects. Um, MSAA is uh, being brought back. So thank goodness for that. And uh, for those with stronger rigs or really, really stronger video cards, uh, they now have the option to use SSA. So uh, SSAA. So uh, just be careful as that's really it can really tax your system but you know overall this you know bringing these options back is just um, good stuff it's really good stuff now the seventh change that i found interesting uh, was basically the flight path uh, improvement so there's so much drama around the lack of flying um, but um, at least at the very least um, this these patch promises to offer more direct routes to other flight points and that's always a good thing. I mean, I don't mind uh, on a personal level, I don't mind the lack of flying for as long as the taxi system becomes more efficient. Okay, so we're now moving on to the class changes. Let's start off with Warriors, my favorite class. So um, we're looking at the following uh, interesting changes. So the first one that really got my attention was Avatar. So Avatar's duration will be down to 20 seconds from 24 but the cooldown will be reduced from 3 minutes to 1.5 minutes so in terms of pvp uh this starts to look like a very good option now especially when paired with the anger management talent uh second second wind leech effect is up to 25 percent from 10 percent uh well second wind turned into a very bad talent in this expansion and unfortunately this change doesn't make it much better at least in my opinion the problem with second wind is still you need to bash something to get the heal effect and if you get crowd controlled you don't get any heal at all so testing might show otherwise but i do believe that enraged region is still the superior choice for pve and pvp one change i don't particularly like is that execute damage has been reduced by 11.4 percent so you know this really isn't good for pvp um blizzard is making uh, sudden death a less attractive option anyway for changes um shield barrier now absorbs 24.4 percent damage so this is a good change for both pve and pvp um, as i always thought it was pretty weak as an absorb mechanic the next change is um, thunderclap so the snare effect uh, is up to 10 seconds in pve and eight seconds in pvp so it's not an amazing change but you know uh personally that extra two seconds in pvp really helps as you don't have to you know constantly uh, worry about your snare effect falling off now the last change for warriors that's interesting is the improved defensive stance it now increases armor gain by 10 percent which is up uh, it's up from the previous um, or the current 5%. So this is really a good change in any kind of playstyle. Okay, so moving on to Death Knights. So uh, most of the Death Knight changes are centered around um, Blood Death Knights. So the changes are the following. Um, Breath of Sindragosa no longer has initial runic power requirements, but the mark of syndragosa effect it applies can only be used by blood death knights next is uh, death siphon is stronger in the next patch it will now heal for 400 percent of the damage cost which is up from the current uh, 335 so uh, 
I, you know, in Blood Death Night Time King, I still don't think that would be the best option to take. Uh, next change is Defile. Again, they're just restricting the damage reduction effect to Blood Death Knights. And the fourth change is that um, for those using Necrotic Plague, um, you the runic power gains are only restricted also to Blood Death Knights. So again, uh, there are other changes to Death Knights, um, the class itself for patch 6.1, but what I've only mentioned right now is how it affects um, Blood DK tanking. Okay, Paladins. So these, there's quite the number of changes to the class itself, but uh, again, I'll just focus on the ones affecting tanking. So the first one is Empowered Seals. So it has been buffed so that the haste buff from Judgment of the Righteous is now up to 20% from 15%. While the heal over time effect of Judgment of Insight has been increased to 2% every 3 seconds uh, instead of the 1% for every 2 seconds. So you know added information uh, to my Paladin tanking guide. Uh, this is really good news for those who want to prioritize haste. Uh, because of the way haste is now working for Paladins, changing up your seals or seal twisting will now make uh, Empowered Seals a good talent pick. This further helps you reach the 50% haste target. Next is um, Execution Sentence. So uh, the healing uh, effect of this has been increased by 100%. So this is a good change if you intend to focus on the single target heals, uh, actually even regardless of your role. Next change is Hand of Purity, so its effect has been buffed. Uh, the general damage reduction part of that spell has been buffed to 15% from 10%, so that's a good effect. Uh, I mean, that's a good additional benefit. Um, there is one uh, glyph change that I really don't like, and that's the glyph, uh, a change in the glyph of Alabaster Shield. Uh, this was a recommendation in my tanking guide, but the glyph will be removed come patch 6.1. So th th this really just means a reduction in the Protection Paladin's DPS, so it it's something I really don't like. Um, the last change is that Seal of Truth will no longer be available to Protection Pallies. Alright, so the last class for this video will be the Droid class. Um, first change is Bristling First cooldown has been reduced to 30 seconds. So this makes the talent a very attractive option since it provides very strong damage reduction even with a very short duration. So it's still a 40% less damage or less stress for your healers to worry about. Um, again, uh, you might just have to weigh things, either go with Pulverize or Bristling Fur. Um, as you know, at, at the moment, I can't decide which one is better in, you know, for most scenarios. The next ch change is that Force of Nature's Trance have been buffed, so they have more health, uh, spell power, armor, and attack power. But um, in terms of uh, tanking, bear tanking, uh, this really won't change uh, my recommendation to go with either um, Son of Ursoc or Soul of the Forest. The third change is that um, Guardian of Elun, or the talent, will also reduce the rage cost of Savage Defense based on the Druid's dodge chance. Um, well, I would still recommend going for either Pulverize or Bristling Fur unless you expect uh, frequent big melee hits. And the fourth change, uh, which is good, is that Mangle Damage has been increased by 20 27%. Okay, so those are my thoughts for the upcoming patch for World of Warcraft. Uh, I hope that you found it useful, especially if you were watching my previous videos. Anyway, so just leave a comment below in case uh, there was something else I might have missed, uh, especially uh, when it concerns tanking and uh, in relation to the other videos I posted. So anyway, um, just uh, as always, just please like this video if you liked it and uh, subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Thanks for watching.